From the tape player, to the Walkman, to the OLED TV, to the PlayStation series, Sony has been at the forefront of technological innovation for the past 60 years. Sony is one of the most impactful companies of the 21st century. In this video, we are going to focus on the history of the company. We are going to have a look at the financials of the company and what the future holds for the company. So let's get to it. The company was started by Ibuka Masaru and Morita Akio in 1946 as Tokyo Telecommunications Engineering Corporation. Ibuka, whose Japan Precision Instruments company had supplied electronic devices during World War II, and Morita, an applied science instructor, had met during World War II as engineers designing heat-seeking missiles in the Japanese army. Ibuka and Morita worked together for the next 40 years in what has been called one of the most productive and intriguing relationships of the decade. Ibuka's genius with product development and Morita's mastery of business management and marketing turned Sony into one of the most renowned brand names on the globe. Sony, which became the official name for the company in January 1958, the company's first consumer product was an electric rice cooker. Although this product sold poorly, they had a very successful business repairing radios and other electrical equipment for the biggest Japanese radio broadcaster at that time. In 1950, Sony introduced the first Japanese-designed tape recorder, although this consumer item also sold very poorly. The company's fortunes were about to take a dramatic turn. In 1952, Ibuka visited the United States and made the initial contacts for licensing the transistor from Bell Laboratories, which at the time was the manufacturing arm of AT&T, and after a few months signed the deal with Bell Laboratories. The agreement led to Sony's first hugely successful product line, the transistor radios. Don't get me wrong, Texas Instruments was the first company to market with its Regency transistor radio in 1955, but it was Sony's TR-63, an inexpensive shirt pocket sized all transistor radio that caught consumers attention when it was released in 1957. The pocket radios were a tremendous success and brought international recognition of the company's brand name. By 1960, business in the United States had prompted the creation of Sony Corporation of America, with headquarters in New York City, and the company opened its store on the Fifth Avenue in 1962. At the 1964 New York World Fair, Sony introduced the MD5, the first all-transistor desktop calculator. In 1968, the company shipped its first color television. By 1971, 40% of Japanese households had color television sets. So, Sony introduced the first color video cassette recorder, which led to its introduction of the Betamax VCR in 1975. The Betamax, though widely considered the best VCR technology ever developed at that time, but it was very expensive. And as more and more studios and video stores turned to VHS, Betamax lost market share, and Sony finally introduced its own VHS in 1988. In 1979, the Sony Walkman portable tape player hit the streets, although Sony's engineers were skeptical about designing a device that could only play and not record. Morita insisted on developing the product, saying he would resign if the Walkman was not a success. The Walkman was an international sensation, and eventually sold hundreds of millions of units. The first compact disc player emerged in 1982 from a development agreement between Sony and Dutch manufacturer Philips Electronics. By late 1980s, Sony executives, especially the company's president and the chairman of Sony's Corporation of America, Norio Aga, wanted to add entertainment content to Sony's operations, and in 1988 it happened when they bought CBS Records Group from CBS Corporation, thus acquiring the world's largest record company. The early 1990s were difficult years for the Sony brand. The Japanese economy entered a decade-long recession, and both Ibuka and Morita suffered strokes. Because of health reasons, Morita officially retired in 1994 and died in 1999. With its founders no longer at the controls, Sony declared its first loss of more than 200 million. Despite the business turmoil, Sony continued to design and deliver new products. 
1994, its entertainment division introduced its PlayStation video game console to the Japanese market, which was highly successful, and by 2002, the gaming unit was contributing to more than 10% of the company's yearly revenues. As of 2018, Sony is one of the most profitable companies in the world, with revenues of $78 billion, which was a 1.4% increase from 2017. They also made $8 billion in profit in 2018, which is an 86.6% increase from 2017. The company employs over 114,000 employees worldwide. Sony has long-term assets worth $125 billion, which is really positive for the company considering that their long-term debt is a mere $5.6 billion. Also, from the annual earnings of the company in 2018, we saw that Sony's game and network services amounted to $20.84 billion US in the company's 2018 fiscal year, making it Sony's largest business segment. Other major business segments include home entertainment and financial services, which brought in 10.42 and 11.56 billion US dollars respectively in the same fiscal year. Sony is set to have a really good financial year in 2020 with the release of the highly anticipated PlayStation 5 in the third quarter of the year. The company is also going to enter the electric car market late next year. They recently announced the concept of an electric car which will surely set the company apart from its competitors and lead to an increase in the revenue of the company. So what do you think of the story of Sony and do you think they'll have a profitable year in 2020? Let us know in the comment section. Thanks for watching.